Okay, so this week we're going to be talking about blind contour drawings. And I'm going to go through this slideshow and just really kind of break down what that means, what um, kind of my expectations are for this week uh, with our first week in art. So um, we're going to get started. And so blind contour drawings, this is... I really want to take time to make sure that we cover the base basics, whether you have lots of experience with drawing or you are just starting your journey of drawing. Um, so what is a contour line, right? I have two different images here, both showing contour lines, and I'm going to click on this and I'm going to pull up a document. And it just talks about what is a contour line, right? A contour line is the outside edge of a shape. So think about your hand, right? The contour lines would be if you took your finger and traced the outside of your hand, those would be the contour lines, right? Okay, and artists use contour lines to show the edge of an object and to illustrate texture. Right, so I really want you to learn to think and see like an artist through contour lines. There are two specific types of contour drawings. Um, there's blind contour drawings, which is what we are going to be doing this week. And blind contour drawings are created without looking at your paper, right? So it's really focusing in on the object or person in front of you and drawing what you see and not what you think you see right? And so it's a great exercise for practicing your hand-eye coordination. And most of the time, these drawings are going to look kind of silly and wonky, and, and they're supposed to look really um, funny, right? They're not supposed to be these grand portraits of, of, um, of realisticness, right? And then another, the other type of contour line is a modified contour or a partially blind contour, right? And so this is um, look by looking both at the object and at your paper, right? So once we have down that, just looking at our object and drawing, we're then going to start um, next week practicing like quick sketches where we look draw, look, draw, and more that observational, right? And again, this is just another way for us to develop that hand-eye coordination. So um, the one on the left is a more of a modified contour lines, right? And then the one on the right is a blind contour drawing. So moving on, why is this important? We kind of talked about this uh, already, but this exercise helps with your hand-eye coordination and it helps you to become a better drawer, right? Just like in sports, you have to practice to improve your coordination and art is the exact same way. The more you practice, the better you will get. So um, we're gonna kind of watch this in action and our artist that we're like just talking about this week and kind of focusing on is um, Allison Kunath and we're gonna watch this video of her talking about, um, this is what she does, right? She does blind contour portraits of people um, and it's a really unique process and so we're gonna watch this video um, that she made and it's about her um, being a blind contour artist. So let's check it out. The thought of following somebody else's rules for the rest of my life terrifies me. But when it comes down to it, I seem to spend a whole lot of time worrying about the rules that I set for myself. Ways to be, rights and wrongs, and a complete obsession with control. One way I let go of control is by drawing without looking at the paper. These are called blind contour portraits. Since my eyes are glued to my subject the whole time, I don't get to notice mistakes. 
or be tempted to change a funny mark and try to make it look more perfect. And since my pen never leaves the paper, I'm forced to make these interesting shapes that are somehow better than they'd end up if I was watching where my pen was going. There's something so special about taking time to really appreciate all the little details of a person's face. We look at people all day long, but how often do we get a chance to truly see them? The best feeling is when we both look down at the paper when it's finished and we're surprised by what we see. These drawings aim to find something unique about each person. But while they bring out individual quirks, they're really just a reminder of how much we're all the same. The goal here is to capture something real about the person. Not something real looking. But something real feeling. video, it was a really great example of how um, Allison really is able to see people, right? And like she said in the video, you know, she's so, because she's glued to her, um, her subject, she really is able to see them in a way that maybe we don't see all the time, right? Um, so, not only does is this a great way for us to practice our drawing skills and our hand-eye coordination skills, but it's also a great way if you are able to focus in on anything to really see its beauty and really see its uniqueness um, to anything else, right? So with that... We are going to, for our I kind of first project in art, we're going to start off by doing some blind contour drawings, okay? So here's the project criteria. You will need to complete 10 blind contour drawings, okay? I know that sounds like a lot, um, but once you get going, I think you'll see it can go pretty quickly, okay? So you need to have, here's kind of how I would like these 10 done, okay? Five of these can be more simple objects, right? Think of like a toy, okay? Like a little Lego or a pair of glasses or even your phone, right? Um, or a water bottle. I would encourage you to find things that have a little bit more detail in them or kind of maybe some texture that you would have to then um, kind of add into your blind contour drawings, okay? So five can be more simple objects, okay? And then the other five must be more complex, like uh, you could do faces like Allison was doing. You could do um, an animal, right? If your cat or dog or uh, snake or lizard or whatever kind of pet you have is willing to sit um, and let you draw them, you could do that. You could do an instrument, right? You could do a shoe. Um, just something that has a lot more um, kind of content to it right so a face we have a nose and eyes and hair and ears and lips and um, wrinkles and and lots of things right and same with animals same with instruments lots of tubes or buttons or whatever right so I want you these last five are probably going to take you a little bit longer than the first five right so um 
this is, we're starting this on Thursday, finishing it on Friday. So I would recommend doing five simple objects on Thursday and five complex objects on Friday. Okay. Um, you can draw whatever you would like. If you are in class, um, you can draw the various objects that I have, okay? Um, do not look at your paper, okay? Even though you may be tempted to and maybe you might peek a quick glance, right? Then quickly remind yourself, oh, I can't look. And then, you know, don't look down again, okay? Um, you can do this by either using a pencil or using a Sharpie from your art pack, okay? You can do this in your sketchbook. I would recommend dividing up a page front and back into four sections, um, and then you'll just use a total of like three, two and a half pages for this, right? So use the front and back, use a straight edge, it could be a ruler or a notebook or something, and draw four quadrants, right? Um, so you have four sections, so that way you can kind of conserve some of your paper a little bit. Or you can use 10 sheets of paper front and back. Um, but I would encourage you to do a few on a page, okay? All 10 drawings are due on Friday, March 19th, okay? You can do them um, at any point, okay? They just need to be submitted before you go to bed on Friday, okay? And I know that spring break is on that Friday, so I'm not going to have you do anything over spring break. If you want to practice some more contour drawings, you can, right? Um, but we'll get back into more drawing uh, when we come back from spring break. Okay, if you have any questions, you need to reach out to me um, and ask me questions on Zoom or in person or by email, okay? Um, but this is going to be our first project.